So, as we already know, if you put the current somewhere, then you get the magnetic field. For example, if you put a conductor here in this slot and you put some current to that conductor, then as a result you get the magnetic field around it and so the magnetic field passes through the lamination. And as we already know uh, from the material properties that the magnetic flux especially likes to go inside the lamination. And usually you don't have not only one conductor, but usually you at least have a coil. So on one side the conductor goes in one direction, marked with this dot, and on the other side the conductor goes in the other direction, marked with the X. And, as you can see, they produce a magnetic field which acts together. So this conductor has a, as a result the magnetic field in that direction inside the machine and also the other conductor which is coming back produces a magnetic field which goes in the same direction when we look at it from the perspective inside the machine. But now how to get the field rotating? Well, you could do something very simple. You could just take another pair of conductors, so another coil. So you switch the first coil off, you switch another coil on, and then you get a magnetic field, which is here and here, and as a result, the whole magnetic field as this direction. And so you can continue by another pair of conductors and you already have a, magnet a rotating magnetic field then. When you're here, you must change the direction of the currents. When you remember, first we put the current here in one direction, now we have it in the other direction. And so also the field goes in the other direction. So what did we do now over the time? In the first time step we switched on the, con the coil number one. Let's say here and here this is the coil number one. We switched it on and then in the second and in the third step we switched it off, we didn't use it. Step number four, what we what you can see here, we switched it on in the other direction and then off again. And after a period we can make the same again and switch it on. What did we do with coil number two? Coil number two was placed here in this second slot and also in this slot. We switched it on after the first coil. We switched it on, switched it off, and then switched it on in the other direction, switched it off. Same for coil number three. Coil number three is placed here and here. It was switched on after coil number one and coil number two. Switched off again and switched on in the other direction. Well, you could do something like that, but it's maybe not the easiest and not, not the most intelligent way to do it. So maybe it's a better idea not switch it on in time number one, then switch it off for quite a long time, switch it on for a short time and then again switch it off for a quite long time. But maybe it's better to put a sinusoidal current in coil number one, another sinusoidal current in coil number 2 and a sinusoidal current in coil number 3. But still, the result what you get here is good but not perfect because the three phases, phase 1, 2 and 3, are not completely symmetric. But you can do a little trick 
and the trick is you flip coil number two. So you change the side of the coils of coil number two from here to here and from here to here. And so you change the sign of the current from, pu from plus to minus and then you have a perfectly symmetric system. So we're going to look in, de in detail now what happens when you use a symmetrical three-phase system for the currents. So in step number one, you don't only have a current in maximum current in phase U, but you also have negative currents in phase V and phase W. And as you can see on the left, they work together. So the positive current in phase U and the negative currents in the phase V and W result in a field, in a magnetic field, which is in direction, in this case, from the left to the right. In the next time step, what we look at, the current in phase, num phase U goes down a little bit the, fa the current in phase V becomes more negative and the phase uh, W becomes zero. And so you can see the result at the in the left that the resulting field changes its, its direction a little bit. If we move one step forward, then we see um, current in phase U goes down again, current in phase V becomes negative to the maximum and current in phase W rises and as a result the, the field, the resulting field shifts again. And so we go on and finally we get our rotating field. And what is so special about it? That the field is rotating without any moving parts. So you have the coils U and V and W and the coils themselves, they don't move. You just put current in a certain way so that as a result you get this rotating field. How does it look like in reality? You place a coil inside the lamination for example, this is now phase U. And usually you have not only one winding, but in this coil you usually have several windings. After that, you also have for one phase not only one coil, but there are several coils. For example, now here we have uh, four coils for the phase U, which are connected in series. After phase U, you insert the coils of phase minus V. And after that, those of phase W. So you continue filling up the stator with coils until the stator is completed. And although all of the coils look exactly the same, when they are connected to different phases and the phases are fed with a three-phase symmetrical system, then as a result you get the rotating field inside the machine. So this is the end of chapter 3a. Now you know 
how the rotating field in the machine is produced.